Hey, thank you for being here with me again today. Uh, before we jump into today's video, I wanted to make a quick little disclosure slash announcement. Um, today's uh, session was not recorded in my normal studio recording type of an environment. And so I had to jump around from place to place as I literally recorded piece by piece of this particular module. And um, you might hear some background noise and stuff like that. I've tried my very best to cut it out to make it so that it's not too distracting or too no annoying or anything like that. But uh, you might end up hearing some. And if that is indeed the case, I really do apologize. And I hope you still get a lot of value from this video. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So uh, let's jump into the actual contents of the video, starting with our very classic introduction. OK, hello and welcome back. This is your boy Hank Hackerson with Hank Hacks Hackers. And we're going to do part two of our Zeek room. Um, we did part one yesterday that included, of course, the intro, the uh, basic monitoring with Zeek. We went through some Zeek logs. Uh, this particular task was actually very useful because it covers a lot of commands that you can use in general when you're uh, parsing through files or you're searching for things. So this one was a really good one. And then the last thing that we did was Zeek signatures. And uh, we found, uh, we created some signature files and used those signatures files to analyze some PCAC files. And then from there, we found the answers to the questions that we were looking for. So uh, it's been a pretty nice experience so far. I learned a lot. I hope you learned a lot as well in the last video. And so we are going to jump into the next few tasks here and try to wrap it up today in this session. Uh, one thing is that this is a subscriber only room. So you would need a subscription with TryHackMe and it's only 12 bucks. But if you use the link in the description below, you'll get a $5 discount on it. So it'll end up becoming seven bucks and it becomes even more affordable. And uh, yeah, you can pretty much run it and gun it. Uh, if you want to do this on your own machine, of course, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, Zeek is available for free. It's an open source software. They do have a commercial version as well, but we're going to be using, uh, I believe we've been using the open source version. So you can download it yourself and kind of just go, go through the videos like that. And I mean, for, for most of the tasks that we do and most of the rooms that we do, a lot of the things are available for free for you to download, uh, you know, from the, the distributor website. And then from there, you can kind of just run along with the videos themselves. So the only thing you would have to do would just be to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified when a new video comes out. And this particular room has been part of the SOC analyst uh, pathway. So the security operations center, security analyst role, and we're going through Zeek and then we're going to go through the next one, which is the Zeek exercises, which is basically, I think we're just going to be using everything that they taught us to try to find the flags and to try to find the information that they need us to find. All right. So Zeek scripts is uh, essentially, as it sounds, it's a, a base of scripts that are available. They're not intended to be modified. So you, uh, at least the base scripts aren't. Uh, there you just run them as is and they can help you do whatever they do. Then there's the user generated or modified scripts that are in a different path, uh, which is the same base path. And then you have just the last item that changes. So base would be the base scripts site would be the scripts that users can generate or modify. And then there are some policy scripts that uh, are in the policy directory, but I guess those aren't supposed to be changed either. And then you have um, uh, the option very similar to snort that you can either load or use a script in live sniffing mode. And uh, you have to identify it in the actual original path or the configuration file, which would be the local .zeek file. And then you can also use a script for a single run, just like running the signature files that we created in the last video. So uh, the Zeek scripts use the Zeek extension. Uh, don't modify anything under the Zeek base directory. As said, you can uh, call scripts in live monitoring mode by loading them with load or load uh, the script name. So you could do the script path or the script name and in the local Zeek file. And then uh, it's event oriented. 
not packet oriented. We need to use and write scripts to handle the event of interest. So this is essentially what we would be using uh, for the signature file, which is what we did in the last video. And uh, the GUI versus scripts, um, let's see what that is like. So there is the wire, so it says, uh, that Zeek provides the chance to automate a lot of things with its scripting power. So let's say that we want to extract all available DHCP host names from a PCAP file. Then we can use something like TCP dump, Wireshark, T-Shark, or Zeek. Um, and when you run uh, Wireshark, you have the same information with Wireshark. However, while this information can be extracted, it's not easy to transfer the data to another tool for processing. TCP dump and T-Shark are command line tools and it's easy to extract and transfer the data and correlating, etc. And so you would be able to run something similar to a sudo command, which is the, the root permission command for TCP dump. And then you run the rest of it for it to actually uh, run the, the scan on the PCAP file, use whatever you want for the ports that you want to extract, then you grep and search through that results to try to find something and then you uh, uh, essentially uh, sort it and find any unique uh, items, etc., etc. And so this is basically the results of this entire command right here. So it gives you the the host name that it found, and then there's two host names, and then T Shark has the same type of option where you can do that, and then it would grab for it and it would give you essentially the same results. Uh, the Zeek script is like this so this is the script that has been made i think this is one of the base scripts um, and then this does essentially the same exact thing with the exception of having to run this giant command right so you see how there's a very very large command when you use tcp dump or t-shark zeke allows you to do it where you actually just search for the dhcp host names and it spits it out for you exact same results that you got previously in these two, except smaller command, much more manageable, especially for somebody that's not familiar with command line or anything of the sort. So the provided outputs show that the script works fine and you can extract the requested, requested information. Uh, this should show why Zeek is helpful, data extraction and correlation. Um, the Zeek scripting is a programming language itself and we're not covering the fundamentals of scripting. In this room, we will cover the logic of scripting and how to use Zeek scripts. You can learn and practice the Zeek scripting language by doing the official training platform for free, which I think is outside of uh, Try Hack Me. I don't think, yeah, this is uh, its own training system. And there are multiple options uh, to trigger conditions. Uh, we can use the built-in function and protocols to extract information from traffic data. You can find supported protocols and BIF either by looking in the setup or visiting the Zeek repository. And this is some customized script locations for BIF, BIF plugins and protocols. And these are all base. So these are the ones that you cannot modify. So that's one of the key things to understand. And oh, I, I think I need to actually start the machine. I did not start the machine today. So we got to wait for that to load real quick and then we will try to answer the rest of these questions here. Okay, cool. So we have loaded our terminal and we're going to be running a variety of Zeek commands. Everything is inside this exercise folder or exercise files folder. Um, so we are currently, okay, we're here and we need to go to exercise files and we are going to be using the task six file. So task six, and there is two individual directories in here. So uh, there is uh, the first question applies to the small flows PCAP file. So it says investigate the DHCP log file. And what is the domain value of vinlap one host? So let's see what we can find here. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do was we had to actually read the uh, PCAP file and we used the DHCP hostname Zeek uh, script. And then from here, we're going to now find a bunch of new log files. And so the one that we are interested in 
is the DHCP log file. So we're going to cat through that. So which is basically uh, we're going to read that. And then once we do that, we are going to do Zeek cut, which is a command that we used a lot in the last video. And we want to find the host name specifically and the domain and you want to grep for, which is the specific one is this thing right here, the vinlap uh, 01. That's the one that we want to grep for. So we can pull these items, these line items for that specific host. So vinlap 01 and there it is. And so that should be it. So Astaro Vineyard or Astaro Vineyard, whatever. Uh, so we're just gonna copy this right here and paste it inside our answer. And that should be the answer. Great, that is it. And uh, the next question says, investigate the big flows PCAP file. So we're just gonna go back into this one now and uh, investigate the DHCP log file. What is the number of identified unique host names? Okay, so that one is also a similar command to what we ran before. So we're going to go back one, then we're going to go into big flow and we'll do an LS and these are the files. So we're going to read it first. So Zeek C read the big flows PCAP and then we're going to use the DHCP hostname dot Zeek. So it's going to find that for us. And so there we go. So it has finished. It actually was a lot of stuff that came out of this. So now what we want to do is we want to find the number of unique uh, host names. So we're going to do cat dhcp.log. We're going to cut with Zeek and we're looking for the host name again. And we're going to sort this time. So sort nr. And then we want the unique files. And one uh, search option that I found the other day that was actually really useful and it was inside the the kung fu uh task where it lists all of the different uh things for us it says count the line numbers and i want to see if this is actually going to so i'm going to run it like this first and then i'm going to use the command so there it is this is all of the unique ones so i'm going to run that one more time and i'm just going to add this command at the end to see if it actually gives us the exact number of lines and it's 18 so and it's counting this very last one as well so it's counting that one so not counting that one this should be 17 and so let's try 17 to see if that's actually the answer and i'm pretty sure that is the answer because it literally just counted it for us and it is exactly 17 so uh that that wcl item when you need to count the number of lines especially if it's a lot i mean this is enough for you to be able to one by one count so it's not that bad but when there's a lot of lines and you want to count all of them it's very very useful to use this little piece of uh, code or this little command at the bottom right here and it'll give you exactly the number of lines that have been output and it's just it's very very useful so i highly recommend that like, you kind of add that to your arsenal of commands and so that was that one. And so now we're going to investigate the DHCP log file. What is the identified domain value? So the DHCP log file, and we want the identified domain value of which one though? It didn't say which one that we want. Okay, so let's just run it and see what we can find. So I'm just gonna assume that we're also doing it for the big flow file. So we're just gonna run DHCP dot log and then we want to z cut the domain and we're going to sort it and we're going to look for the unique one and there needs to be a space there come on buddy there you go and okay so there's just one and the answer should just bring out one and so that's it it is jlam.net i think that's how it is so jalam.net should be the response, the answer that we're looking for. And it is indeed. So we got all of the answers to our current task right here. So let me minimize this. And I'm going to refresh it so you can actually see. <clears throat> but it's going to skip us to the next task. But this is all the questions that have been answered for this one. So the first one didn't require an answer. Uh, the second one was... Uh, investigate the small flows, investigate DHCP log, what is the domain value, and you saw the command that we ran. 
So if we just go up a little bit and we get to the very, very beginning of this whole thing, we can kind of go through all of that together. So first we read it. So investigate, we read it first. That was the command to read it and it gave us this information and it generated logs for us, which is also one of the big things that we were looking for. And once we had the logs generated, then we ran the next command, which is the cat through the log. So we just read through the log and cat essentially, if none of these other things were included, it would just print everything that was inside this log onto the screen. So you cat through that first and then you do one of these little bars. I think they call them a pipe or something. And then you do the Zeek cut command and you're searching for the host name and the domain name. And then we're going to grep for that specific host name to get those items for it. And so we did, and this is the relevant host name for that. And then uh, we went into the big flow file and we ran the same command exactly to read the big flow file. The output for that was much larger. And once we had the output for this, we just had to, again, read through the DHCP log that was generated and we cat through that and uh, Zeke cut the host name, sort NR and unique, and it gave us all of the stuff. And all I did was I just added the WCL at the end of that same exact command and it gave us the number of lines that came in and it included this dash right here. So it included that line as, an, as one of the counts. So if you just remove that, it would be 17, right? So that was the answer for that. And then we just wanted to see how many unique domains were available through this thing. So we cut for the domain and we sorted and we found the unique uh, responses. And there is that. So that was fairly straightforward. And we are done with that particular task. So we're going to move on to the next one. The next task is about using Zeek scripts again, but now we're going to be using scripts with signatures or try, whoops, trying to find signatures or combining them, excuse me. So uh, writing a basic script. So this is a basic script that we're going to be running and uh, it's using the standard commands or the events, excuse me, a simple example event called Zeek init and Zeek done. And so these events work once the Zeek process starts and stops and they don't have parameters and some events will require parameters. So that's basically it. So once it started, it would say, hey, I started. And once it's done, hey, I, I'm done. And that's it. <laughs> that's literally all it does, right? So basic enough. It's simple enough to understand, okay, you have an event. You assign the name to the event. There's a opening and closing parentheses right after, very similar to Python, except there is no colon here. And then right after this, you put a squiggly bracket, print whatever you want to print, and that's just a print command. And this is very similar to Python again. This is identical to Python. And then you close it. And I think this is almost Python-esque, like very, very close to it. Uh, and we've done a couple of videos on Python, by the way. So you, this is why I'm saying this, because you can go to those videos, Python for pen testing and Python introduction, just to kind of see a little bit of the syntax over there. But this seems it feels very similar to Python. So that's it. So that was the, the, the script. And then when you run the sample PCAP with the script that we just created, all it does is that. And then when it's done, obviously, it's going to have all of the log files in the working directory that you were just in, right? Then there's the new connection uh, parameter that we can use. And so what it does is uh, we're going to print the packet data to the terminal and see the raw data in this script. We are requesting the details of a connection and extracting them without any filtering or sorting. To accomplish this, we are using the new connection event. Uh, this event is automatically generated for each new connection and the script provides bulk information on the terminal. We need to get familiar with Zeek's data structure to reduce the amount of information and focus on the event of interest. So we need to investigate the bulk data. So when you create a new connection event, the category, I guess, is connection, and it's going to print C. Or no, I'm sorry, that's a variable. It sounds like it's a variable that we just created. So new connection, the variable is going to be the connection, and then print the variable. And so you run it, and this is bulk. This is what, it, what they mean by bulk data. And it just all came out into the screen. And so you have the originating IP, 
the originating port and the protocol, then the responding ID, the responding port and the protocol, and then you have the size, the state, the number of packets, number of bytes, flow label, the L2 address, and the response right here. And that also close out with the L2 address. And then you have the start time, the duration, the service, the history, the UID, the tunnel, VLAN, and the rest of these things are blank. Uh, there's nothing associated with the rest of these uh, specific variables or parameters. But it's, I mean, it seems like one giant packet was read, or not one, excuse me, one giant response was created for one singular packet. And for that packet, we got all of this data. And it kind of looks intimidating at first, but when you just look between these square brackets, you kind of can see that, oh, this is what they're actually doing. And it's, I mean, it's fairly simple if you know how to kind of decipher some of this stuff. So uh, it provided bulk data for each connection. Uh, the style is not the best usage and in real life, we'll need to filter the information for specific purposes, especially if you're on a time crunch because you're doing threat hunting, right? So you can't like go read word for word, line for line. So if you closely at the output, you can see that there's an ID and a field value for each part, which is true. So to filter the event of interest, we're gonna use a primary tag. In this case, C comes from connection. So that's what that variable was. And ID value comes from ID and the field name. So you should notice that the fields are the same as the fields in the log files. So the new connection, it's C again, is going to be the variable. It's gonna print a bunch of things just for the separator, I guess. Then it's gonna print a blank line, then new connection found, another blank line, and then print format. You're gonna have the source host, and it's gonna print the source information, including the C ID and origin H, and then C ID and original port, right? So original ho originating host and originating port. And so it's C meaning connection, ID, originating host, etc., And then you're gonna print the destination host and same thing, it's going to print the ID responding host and ID responding port. And it's, it's simple enough to understand because there is a pattern to all of it. And you can, if you just pay attention, you can find the pattern to all of this stuff. And so this exact thing is going to now hopefully give us a little bit, there you go, it gives us a little bit more clean of a response and now we can see what we want exactly so we you found a new connection the source host was yada yada destination host was yada yada so fair good enough simple enough so uh script 201 so from 101 we went to 201 these script use scripts and signatures together so the script is going to be this and uh state is signature state a message string data string and if this is also very python-esque so it says if the state of the signature id is ftp admin print signature hit ftp admin and then we're going to combine it with the ftp admin signature which we saw in the previous video so it's looking for the tcp ip protocol and it's going to search for anything that has these in it and then FTP username input found. So when you run it, you'll be running against the FTP PCAP, you're running the FTP admin signature and the 201 Zeek script. So once you have both of those, then you get signature hit, it's, it's found, etc. signature hit, it's found, etc. cetera. So uh, it's, once the files are created, and so this was a created script that we just made right now, and then this is a previous FTP admin script which kind of came standard inside the exercise file as we were working with it. And all we had to do was just modify the certain parameters that we wanted to search for and maybe even just change the uh, uh, string, excuse me. But uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? So then you have the scripts 202 where you're loading all of the local scripts and you can do that by just using the command local. So Zeek, C, and then you just read the PCAP, local, and then you list it, and then it shows you all of the local scripts that have been used. So Zeek, 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 uh, any other ones? No, that's it. So it used all the local scripts, 
And from that, um, doesn't provide log files for the scripts uh, that doesn't have hits or results. So these are the only ones that actually uh, had results. So it only provides whichever scripts were, were yielding any kind of a result. And from that, you can do, instead of doing all of the local scripts, you can do specific scripts. And so you would do the same to read the file. Then you just go to the path of the script that you want to use. And you just use that specific script file. And then you run it. And then you do a cat through it. And then TS note and message. And it will show you basically what happened here. And so this one is for detecting brute forcing, right? So TS would be the timestamp, the note, and then the message. So this is the specific ID, I want to say. I don't think this is a timestamp. Maybe it is. No, I don't think this is. This might be the actual timestamp. And then you have the FTP brute forcing. And then the source had 220, not 200. It had 20 failed logins on one FTP server in one second. Zero minutes, one second. So the above output shows how to load a specific script. It provides more information than the one we created. It provides one single line output and a connection summary for the suspicious incident. You can find and read more on the pre-built scripts and frameworks by visiting their online book at that link. So we are now going to answer these questions, which is a handful of questions. We have uh, task 7, 101, 201, and then the signature files associated with it, and then 202. And that should be it for this particular task. So let's go back to our machine here. And I'm just going to clear the terminal just to give us a clean terminal. And we're going to start from the top, which is um, go to folder task 7. And from there, we want to investigate the file with the 103 Zeek script. So let's go to this original folder and go to task seven and we have the 101 right that's what we're going to yeah cd 101 and we're going to run zeke against this uh, pcap file and we're going to use the 101 the 103 zeke script so we're going to use the 103 zeke, zeke script against that pcap file and let's see what we get so we got a bunch of things and we're going to do an ls and now we got a bunch of log files that have been created let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see better so this the command was very standard and there's a bunch of stuff that just came out of this so look at this let's just scroll all the way up look at that there's a lot of stuff that came out uh so the command what am i doing i could literally just press up and it will bring the command up for us so there you go that's the command that i ran <laughs> sometimes i i shock myself uh, <laughs> So this is the command that we just ran, Zeke, dash capital C, dash R, and then sample PCAP, and then we used the Zeke file that we were told to use. And so it says, investigate the terminal output, what is the number of detected new connections? So, I mean, I am not going to read all of this. I can't count all of this. So let's see if there is a way that we can shortcut that. Okay, so to find it, because when I scrolled all the way to the top, it actually stopped the results. It didn't even show me all of the results, so you know that there's a lot of results. So to find it, we're just going to go, we're going to run that same exact command, except now we're just going to grep through the commands, and we're going to look for new connections found, exactly as it says right there. And then we're going to look for the unique count. That's basically what we want. So if we count this, it should give us some kind of a response. And let's see. Okay, there we go. The first line that I ran, it said unique connections and the actual thing says unique connection. And so there is it. So unique count, it says 87 new connections found. And so the answer to that question of how many are there should be 87. And it is 87, great. So now we are going to go to the task folder 201. So we're just gonna go back one and we're gonna go into 201. And from 201, we want to investigate the FTP PCAP file, which is right there. And uh, we're going to use the 201 Zeke script, which is right there. 
investigate the signature log file that comes out and what is the number of signature hits. So here we go. So we're going to run Zeek again. And when that's done, we're going to now investigate the signature log file is what they're telling us to do. Oh, my mistake. I actually didn't use the signature search. So I have, I'm going to do S and I'm going to do FTP admin dot sig. So we are to find uh, what is the number of signature hits. So let's see how many signature hits we can find. Okay, so when you do cat signature dot log, it gives you a bunch of things. And I was trying to find the individual uh, parameter or I guess the ID that we're supposed to be looking for to find it. And I believe it's actually called sig ID, sig underscore ID. And so we're going to just run the same cat command, except now we're going to use z cut to find the sig ID. And then as you already know, we're going to do unique and then we're going to count the number of unique and it should give us a number and that's the number. So 1401 would be the number. And so let's see if that is indeed the answer. And that is also the answer. So, okay, go now investigate the signature log file. What is the total number of administrator username detections? So we're going to go and search for that and we're going to be grepping for that. So the command is going to be pretty simple. First, we need to find uh, the actual columns because it's kind of tough to notice without actually being able to see everything. So when you do less, uh, it allows you to scroll through this whole thing. And can I do, there we go. Oh, whoops, went too far. That's the one that we're looking for is user admin is what we're trying to search for. And so you click on the, the arrows to the right until you get here and you would find that. And so that's where we're at. And then so from here, we're going to press Q to quit and just get out of that. And then from there, we're going to be able to now grep or actually run the following search command, uh, which is what we need to be able to find the, the answer to the question. So, so from here, now we can actually write our command to search using Zeek cut. So we're going to cat through the signatures log again except this time I'm just going to do Z cut at the end and we're going to search for sub message and we're going to sort it and we're going to find the unique count. And there you go. So you have user admin is a 670 and then user administrator is 731. So we're going to go here and we want administrator. So 731 is going to be our answer and that is the right answer. Great. Um, now investigate the FTP PCAP with all local scripts and investigate the loaded scripts log file. What is the number of loaded scripts? So the local command would, is going to be what we're going to use to run the, the uh, read of the PCAP with all local scripts, right? So very, very simple command. It's going to, first and foremost, let me just make sure that I'm in the right place. Uh, it is in... 201. Yeah, very good. And so we're going to read the FTP PCAP again. So it's going to be Zeek CR FTP PCAP and local to use all local scripts. And it's going to go through it. So now if we do LS, there should be something that says loaded scripts. And there is right there. It says loaded scripts. So now we want to read through the loaded scripts and see what we can find here. So loaded scripts there you go and then we're going to do the same strategy of less to see what shows up and how many potential items we can find and so it's basically uh, the the ones that are inside the opt zeek base biff uh, file directory right so um, since we know what we're looking for it's going to be this particular set of characters, I guess, or we can call it a string probably. So we can grab for this, we can search for this, and then we can do the command that we had last time to count the number of lines that come up. And then from that, we'll hopefully be able to find because there's a lot of them. And from that, we'll be able to find how many there are in here. So we're going to press Q to quit. And now we're going to go through the thing one more time. And I'm just going to do up to do that. And now I'm going to grab through the results. And what I want to grab for is forward slash opt forward slash 
asterisk because it's a wild card character and it shows everything after that so it counts basically any line that has those characters plus whatever comes after it and then we just do WCL to count it and press enter and there we go so 498 imagine trying to count that manually right so it basically grabs for all of this including anything that would come after it that's what that asterisk does it searches for anything after that that would whatever it doesn't matter what comes after that so anything that includes this in it with whatever that comes after it that's what we're counting and the response would be 498 so let's make sure that that's actually right that is indeed correct very good so 498 and so last but not least we're going to go back to cd202 here and see what's in here and though the last question says investigate the ftp root pcap with the there's a very specific script for detecting brute forcing and then investigate the notice log file what is the total number of brute force detections so first i'm going to copy the entire path of the script because it's a very long path and then we are going to investigate the pcap file with this script and see what happens here so here we go it is uh ls i did already so i'm going to do zeke c r uh, FTP brute FTP brute pcap and we're going to use this script here that whole thing <laughs> so run that and that should give us a log file which it does so now what we want to do is we want to go through this specific log file to see what is the total number of brute force detections. Let's see how many we can find. So with this one, uh, just by running cat notice.log, uh, it's not a really large result. And the only uh, instances of FTP bruising, brute forcing that I see are two. So there's only two that show up here. Uh, apart from that, uh, I don't think there's anything else really. So I think it, the answer is two. So let's click on the thing and is it two? Oh, it's two. Okay, great. So yeah, that is the answer. So it's not, it wasn't really a really large output that came out of this. So all I had to do was just run cat just to print the contents of the notice log file. And this is the, the entire content of the file and you can eyeball it and find it very quickly. Um, if this was not the case, we would have to create some kind of a search string as, and account and so on and so forth. But thankfully, this one was fairly simple and straightforward. So that is that one. And so now we can go back here. And if I just reload the screen, you'll be able to see all of the, the responses. So let's actually go to this one because this is the one that we were just doing. So we got, you know, we went to task 101. We investigated the sample PCAP with the Zeek script and uh, investigated the terminal output what is the number of new connections so what we had to do was find the actual string and it was new connection found and then we grepped for that and then we counted how many times that showed up and that was 87 and for this one the same thing but now we did the investigation of the ftp pcap file with the ftp signature as well as the 201 zeke script file and uh, this was in, in uh, directory 201. And so when we ran that, it said investigate the signatures. What is the number of signature hits? And this was a really big one. So we had to use a count parameter and that helped us find the 1401 number. And then investigate the signatures log file. What is the total number of administrator username detections? And this was another one that we had to go and try to find the, we did less the command so we read the file we did cat uh, the name of the file signatures are log and then we did the pipe and then we did less and it shows us everything towards the top of the uh, screen or the, towards the top of the file which includes the specific column that you're trying to search for and so we found it and I think it was sub uh, message or something uh, sub underscore message something like that and so we grepped for that we searched for that using zeke cut and then we counted the number of instances that it showed up and it gave us two different results it was user admin and user administrator and we wanted to find the user administrator count and we got it that way and then we did the ftp pcap with all local scripts and then there was a loaded scripts file 
that showed the number of loaded scripts and it was basically done by the path of the script that was used and so we just had to search for that entire uh, the entire file but we did it with the grep forward slash opt forward slash asterisk so that we can find everything that had that specific string in it and there was 498 instances what's the hint on this the hint is local commando local to be able to just run all local scripts um, and then we went to the last uh, file or the last directory folder and we investigated the brute force bcap with this particular script and then the notice log we just printed it onto the screen and there was only two instances of ftp brute force showing up and that was that so that's that one was a little bit of a longer one but it ended up working for us and we found all of the answers to the questions so there we go moving on to the next one okay so zeke has frameworks that you can use and uh, instead of using individual script you can use a framework of scripts or potential uh, modules that are available and the first one would be the framework for hashes and uh, out of the 15 plus frameworks that are available and there's there's a lot more information on this but you can uh, we're just going to work on some of the basic ones today uh, you would use it using the load command and then you go to the path of the actual framework name and then uh, it'll give you access to it. Um, for the first one, we're going to uh, use a pre-built function of the framework and have the hashes MD5, SHA1, and 256 of the detective files. We'll call the file analysis framework hash all files and to uh, accomplish that. And so before loading, we can just look at how it works. So you just use the cat command and it'll show you the hash demo Zeke script and then you have the cat command to show you the hash all files Zeke script that's inside the frameworks. So the, when you do the hash demo Zeke script, it loads that framework for you and then you can just do the cat command to see what's actually inside this framework file and it shows you. So it loads the base files hashes and then it goes through the uh, analyzer and analyzing MD5, SHA1 and 256, right? Um, when you execute the script and investigate a log file, this is what it looks like. So you would do the Z cap or the Z command, excuse me, against the PCAP and you use the script for hash demo and then you use it against the thing again, just using the uh, hash all files uh, framework and it puts everything onto the screen for you. Uh, so you do the log, there's going to be a log file created called files log. And then you just use the cut command to do MD5, SHA1, and 256. And it gives you all of the hashes for this. So when you look at the output, you see that both scripts provide the same result. The preference is up to the user. Both of the usage formats are true. Pre-built frameworks are commonly used in scripting with the load method. Specific scripts are used as practical scripts for a particular case. So the file framework can extract uh, files, and this is another one that we're going to be using. Uh, we can extract the files that are transferred. And so you, again, just run the command, you read the PCAP, and then you just use the specific framework that you want to use. And this one is extract all files. And then when you run LS, it'll show you everything that has been extracted. And there's going to be an extract, fi extract files file. Um, and we extracted the file successfully. There's a new folder called extract files and it automatically is created and all the detected files are in it. So first we're going to list the contents of the folder and then we'll use the file command to determine what file types there are. So when you do ls extracted files, it'll show you these are the files and then you do cd extracted files. So we go in there and then we just say file type or file and then the asterisk command and NL I think is just for new line and it shows you so this one is an ASII text file with no terminators this one is a composite document file this one is a PE32 executable and so on and so forth so 
it extracted three files. The file command shows us that one is a TXT file, one is a doc file, and one is an executable file. Zeek renames the extracted files. The name format consists of four values that come from the connection log and the files log. Default extract keyword, timestamp value, protocol source, and connection ID. So the extract keyword, the TS, timestamp value, the source protocol, and the connection ID, the con UIDs. So let's look at the files log to understand possible anomalies better and verify the findings. The output below uh, in the files log provides the same results with additional details. And we're going to focus on the executable uh, by searching its connection ID from the UIDs. So you do the cat files log and cut the FUID connection UID, the hosts, RX hosts, MIME type and extracted uh, name. And so new line for each one, and it'll show you each one as such. And then from here, we can grep the specific, I guess, RIN, which is the identifier number and the column. And uh, we're gonna use the column T command, excuse me, and new line for each one less. So this is kind of what it, the output is shown here. Uh, it says the full output is not shown. We do the same actions in the attached VM just to kind of get an idea of what's going on. And the grep tools help us investigate the particular value across all available logs. The above terminal output shows us that the connection ID linked with exe appears in the connection log files log and HTTP log files. Given uh, the given example demonstrates how to filter some fields and correlate the findings with the rest of the logs. We have listed the source and destination addresses, file and connection ID numbers, MIME types, and file names up to now provided outputs and findings show us that the record number is a, an executable file and other files provide additional information. So now we have the notice framework for gathering intelligence. Um, it can work with data feeds to process and correlate events and identify anomalies. The intelligence frameworks requires a feed to match and creates alerts from the network traffic. So if we demonstrate a single user generated threat intelligence file and let Zeek use it as the primary intelligence file, primary intelligence source, the source location would end up being uh, this particular case, which is the intelligence text file. And there are two critical points that we will never forget, which is the source files has to be tab delimited and you can manually update the source and adding extra lines doesn't require any redeployment. However, if you delete a line from the file, you will need to redeploy the Zeek instance. Let's add the suspicious URL gathered from case one and uh, see the feature in action. So before executing, we're gonna look at the intelligence file and the script contents. So you would use cat for that and it would show you the intelligence, uh, the Zeek Intel TXT so there's field indicator, indicator type, the meta source and meta description. And so smartfacts.com, domain, and this is the meta source and the source description. And then you would run the same cat command against the intelligence demo script. And that'll show you what it's loading as far as the frameworks are concerned, which is the scene and the do notice. And then it's gonna read the files according to whatever is the pathway of the file, right? So the final extracted value is going to be the, or excuse me, the final command. Once we actually want to run it against the PCAP is going to be running the Zeek uh, regular reading command against the intelligence demo Zeek script. And that will pull up the associated frameworks. And then once you have a log generated, which will be the intel.log, we're going to cut the UID the originating host, responding host, and scene indicator and the matched command. So the UID, the host number, the receiving host, and the uh, indicator, as well as the matched command. And so there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go through the task eight exercise files, and we're going to run some of these uh, commands using the specific frameworks just to try to find the responses as always. So let's go into our virtual machine and see what we can find. 
Okay, so the specific task that we're going to be working in is going to be task eight. And so we want to get into that task file as usual. And there's a few things that are already in here for us. So there is the uh, the case PCAP, the intelligence demo Zeek uh, script, the hash demo Zeek script, and so on and so forth. So we're going to first investigate the case one PCAP with the intelligence demo script and then the log file that comes out and see what the second finding is and where the Intel info was found. And so in the hint, it just says read on the Zeek and the script if you don't see the Intel log file. That's the only hints that we get. So uh, first, we're just going to run Zeek and see if we get a log file. And from there, we're going to move forward. So there's the thing. And then now we just want to intelligence demo Zeek. And we do see the Intel log file right here. So there's that. And then from there, uh, we're just going to investigate the log file and see what is in here. And there it is. So it says, what is the second item or what is what is the second thing that you find? Okay, so this is the one thing that will probably help to make this a little bit easier, which is the scene where location. So if we do the the cat intel dot log command one more time, and then we just do Zeek cut scene where should get two information, two pieces of information. And the second one is right here. So it's been it's seen in the host header. I think that's the information. So this was the original output right here that we could have found. So let's see if that's indeed the answer here. Yep, that is good. So we got that one. So now we're going to investigate the log file. What is the name of the downloaded exe file? So let's first run this, which is ls. And the what do we want? We want the HTTP log file. So there's this file. And we want to see what's in here. And there's a lot of stuff in here. So what we want to see is what is the name of the downloaded exe file? This one's a little bit more straightforward. So it'd be just grep for anything that has exe in it. So let's see what we can find. And there is just one file that is an actual exe file. Everything else has, or the other item has exe in it but it's not the file itself so it would be knr.exe and that should be good and so now we're going to investigate the the uh, pcap file with the hash demo script and we're going to look at the files log uh, with the m what's the md5 hash of the downloaded exe file so let's do that Okay, so we ran it and the files log was already there. So there's probably more content in there now. So we'll do cat files log and let's see if we can just do a Zeek cut uh, to see if we can find MD5 in there. And there are three MD5 hashes and we want the MD5 of the .exe file. So let's see if I can do cat files .log uh grep.exe and then do zeke cut md5 no nothing comes out of that mm, so let's see how we can maybe better search for this instead of just browsing through the file okay so if we trust if we run our trusty uh less command after we run cat we can see that there is at the very end there's one two three four and then there is the hash files right here. So this would be one, two, three, four. So that would be SHA 256. This would be SHA one. And then MD5 would be this. So MD5. And then, so this would be that. And then this would be parent fluid. This would be time out. This would be overflow bytes, missing bytes, total bytes. And what do we got? Uh, the scene bytes, the is origin, log, uh, local origin, uh, duration, which would be that. 
and then file name, we should be that, mime type, or I think file name is, it's either file name or mime, mime type. I think it's uh, mime type that we're looking for because file name, this seems like file name. So I'm just gonna look for all of them. I'm gonna look for mime type, file name, and then we're gonna look for MD5. So mime type, file name, and MD5. So we're gonna cat through that again. And we're gonna do Zeek cut, mime type, file name, and MD5. There we go. And so the executable, the executable, executable, the executable MD5 hash is that. So we're just gonna use that and submit. And there you go, the answer is correct. And now the last one says investigate case one with the file extract demo and look at the extracted files folder and review the context contents of the text file, what is written in the file. So we're gonna run again, the same thing. So Zeek C R uh, case one dot pcap and we're going to use in this time file extract whoops extract demo there is that and you're going to run that and now there should be a new directory called extracted files so we're going to cd into extracted files and there should be a dot txt file so it would be file this and then do that and that should give us the general and so composite document ASII text I think so the first one this one is the one that we want to try and uh, look at to see what's inside it so let's see if I can actually just copy that and do cat and then paste that and it says Microsoft NCSI that's all we got in here. So copy, paste, and that was the correct answer. So this was, it wasn't bad. It was fairly easy to do. Um, and hopefully you kind of got a general understanding of what we did. Uh, one of the things that has, ha that has served to be pretty useful has been the, the less command after running cat on a file so that we can kind of just see what the the top section of that file is especially if it's a really large file you can run the less command to see what the top section is so that you can see what these various columns are so that when you're trying to uh, search through it you know what to search for and that has been very very useful so running less on a specific log file just so you can see what's inside it uh, ends up being pretty darn useful so we're going to go back here and just reload the page just so you can see that we got all the answers correctly on the frameworks section, uh, which is right here, right? So we got, what do we got? We got the uh, case one uh, with intelligence demo Zeek, investigate the Intel log file, look at the second finding, where was the Intel info found? And it was HTTP colon colon and an in-host header. So specifically, we just wanted the in-host header part. And all we did, uh, we, uh, do, we used Zeek cut to find scene.where. So where was it seen, basically? And that's the, the information, or that's what the specific answer. Then investigate the HTTP log file. What is the name of the downloaded exe file? And all we had to do was grep4.exe. And we found there was two items. One of them said exec. So obviously it has exe in it. And the other one was literally .exe. So that was the answer. Uh, and this one, when we ran the hash demo script, uh, we were able to find the hash values, but we just had to find the specific uh, name of the file or the cat the the column that included the name of the file which was either I think it was either mime type or file name it was one of those two um, and so I just used both of them and then I used the column for md5 and it gave us the md5 hash values for each one of those files and last but not least we did the file extract we went inside the file extract files folder and we did file type just to see what kind of file it was. And then we found the one that was a uh, text file and we just ran cat against it and it gave us 
the contents of it. So pretty simple, fairly straightforward to do. And now we can move on to the next section. Okay, so moving to our last task here, it is the Zeek scripts uh, packages task. And uh, so package manager is something uh, that helps us install third party scripts and plugins to extend Zeek functionalities. And it's installed with Zeek and available with the ZKG command. Users can install, load, remove, update, and create packages with the ZKG tool. You can read more on it and view available packages here and here, <laughs> which is basically two separate out, uh, outbound links, uh, external sources. And uh, you would need root privileges to use ZKG, so keep that in mind. So the basic uh, usage of ZKG would be to install a package, to install a git if you wanted to use a git URL, um, if you wanted to list the packages, do remove one to refresh the list of uh, installed packages and of course to upgrade a specific package or just I guess all of the installed packages. As it says right here, I think it, it just upgrades everything. So there are multiple ways of using packages. The first approach is to use them as frameworks and then calling specific package path or directory per usage. The second most common approach is calling the packages from a script with the load method and the third and final approach is using the packages calling the package name uh, note that this method works only for packages installed with the install method um, so here we go we got the clear text submission of a password um, so we're going to install a package first and then demonstrate the usage in different approaches uh, the package is already installed in the given virtual machine that we have right now so we don't need to reinstall it uh, but this is basically how you would do it so you would just go zkg install and that's the name of the specific thing that you're trying to install um, the following package will be installed and then that you just kind of go through the prompts and then when you do list it should show you that it's actually been installed and it's right there um, then we have the uh, so now we can successfully install a package as the description mentions uh, the package creates alerts for clear text passwords found in HTTP traffic um, then you call the script so calling with script you would be uh, Zeek uh, CR uh, HTTP PCAP and then sniff mode Zeek and then oh I think you can actually combine that's what that looks like because previously I did dash capital C dash R and I think you just do you could combine the two options together, which is now useful to know <laughs> at, now that we're at the end of the friggin' room. Um, the next part is to view the script contents, uh, which we would just do as such. Uh, this is just kind of just showing us the, the process. I don't think we need to do this every time, but it's just showing us what's going on. So when we look at the script, it just says that it's going to load this particular uh, sniff pass or sniff package. Um, and then calling it from the path. So you would just read the PCAP and then call it from the path. And then from here, we would uh, call it with the package name itself. So you could do that as well. Um, in either case, you can call it with a few different ways, um, specifically with the, so the, there's, it exists within the sniff demo Zeek script that calls on it. Then you can just call it directly from the path or you could just call it with the package name either way works uh, the above output demonstrates how to execute packages against the pcap you can then use the best one for your case uh, the zeke sniff pass package provides additional information in the notice log file so it lets view the logs and discover the obtained data using the specific package and so we have the the notice log we did zeke cut the originating host their responding host the protocol the note and the message so originating host responding host protocol that's the note and that's the message so clear text password uh, supposedly has been found um, uh, so it found clear text passages provided notice and grabbed the usernames so so I guess yeah there you go so we found the usernames um, remember in task 5 we created uh, we created a signature to do the same action now we can do the same activity without using a signature file. This is a simple demonstration of 
physique scripts and the flexibility of packages and all this different kind of stuff. So the next one would be to find geolocation data. And that's another script, which is GeoIP uh, con or package, excuse me. And uh, so this uh, geolocation found in the, uh, what is it? It says it provides geolocation information for the IP addresses in the con.log file. It depends on the GeoLite2 city MMDB database created by MaxMind. This package provides location information for only matched IP addresses from the internal database. And uh, from here, so we would just run the Zeek command to read the file and then just use the GeoIP con. And then once you have that, you would go through the con log file and uh, cut whatever you would need from it. And in this case, there's been a lot of stuff that's been cut out. Um, specifically, there is the UID, the originating host, responding host, originating country code, originating region, originating city, and latitude, longitude, uh, the responding country code, responding region, and responding city. And so you get the UID, the hosts, and I mean, there every, all the other stuff was empty with the exception of getting United States, California, Los Angeles, which is for the responding country code region and city so we've discovered uh, we've covered what the zeek packages are and how to use them so there's much more to this obviously and there's a lot of reference links that they gave us so we can go to that uh, and I, I recommend you read up on this thing if you're interested in zeek this is it's a very very high level overview of all of the things that zeek can do so this is not in any ways meant to demonstrate that you're going to learn everything there is to know about this. It's just a good version of understanding how this whole thing works. And as we get more into the advanced rooms, we'll probably find a lot of different things to do with Zeek, and I'm sure it's going to come up even more so. So um, each exercise has a folder. So we're going to go into the task nine folder, and we're going to investigate the HTTP PCAP with Zeek sneak pass and investigate the notice log file, which username has more module hits. So uh, I am going to restart or reopen the machine just to kind of get us access to it. Did it close out? Let's see if I refresh the page. There we go, there's our machine and we're going to open it in full screen mode. And let's run through the exercise here. All right, so the first question is investigate the PCAP file with SNC, uh, sniff pass mo module and uh, the notice log that comes out, which username has more hits. So first, let's go into task nine real quick. Here we go. And clear text pass uh, is the one that we want let me just zoom in for you a little bit and so in here there should be a few things that we need to do so uh, we're going to do um, Zeek CR now that we know how to do that HTTP PCAP and the specific one that we want is Zeek sniff pass module and as we learned here we could just refer to it by name right so we could literally just take the actual name of it and just refer to it as such. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm actually gonna go here, I'm gonna paste it in here, and we're gonna run it, and it should give us a couple of log files here. And we do have it, so now we wanna look at the notice.log file and see what we can find. So cat notice.log, let's see what shows up. Obviously a lot of good information. And so specifically what we want is they want the, they said a username, right? So it says which username has more module hits. So let's see if we can find a column for username specifically. Okay, so we actually, you know, just did the same command before with was uh, less. So we did cat, the notice.log file, and then a pipe, and then just the word less. And it gave us all of the information. And it's, it's just more organized this way. Um, and so when you kind of click right long enough, you'll get to a section where it says password found for user, so on and so forth. And then there's literally only five lines that say that. And out of those five lines, the one that shows up the most is Brozeek. 
So this is the guy that shows up the most. And so that would be the answer for that. And you press enter on that and there it is. And now we're going to investigate case two uh, PCAP file. And um, with the GeoIP con module and investigate the con log file. What is the name of the identified city? So case two log file, let's quit out of this. So we're gonna go back here and we're going to go into the GeoIP specifically here and there's case two. So we're gonna Zeek uh, CR case two PCAP and we wanna use the GeoIP con module which is going to be this thing. So let's hope that our machine didn't actually end. So let me see if I can extend the time on this machine. Um, so we're gonna use the GeoIP con module, which is uh, named as such. And from there, we should be able to get a con log file. So I'm gonna paste the GeoIP con module here. Press enter here, let's see what we get. Okay, there it is. So we're gonna cat con dot log um, cat con dot log and let's do less so we can kind of get a little bit of an organized version here and so what we want is the it says the city right seems to be Chicago and yeah that's the only thing that's available so we got Chicago does it go down Chicago, yeah, it's the only place that shows up is Chicago. So I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna venture a guess that the answer is Chicago. And that is the correct answer. So which IP address is associated with the identified city? So we're gonna go back here, zoom back in a little bit, and we wanna find the IP that's associated with this city. The machine did actually crash on me, so I had to go back and kind of rerun everything just to get us to the base uh, place that we were at before the machine crashed. And uh, in the meantime, while it was reloading, I found some new commands or some other commands that could actually kind of help us find the city easier as well as the the IP of the city, right? So um because the the whole idea here is that you want to avoid browsing through the files as much as possible and you want to search for individual columns so that you can get that information for yourself so uh what we're, i want to show you is the command that uh, i found that it would actually help us find the city just by uh, filtering through things and then we're going to use that a very similar command to help us find the ip address that's associated with that city okay so this is the command to help us find the city first so we obviously we're just going to cat through the connection.log file we're going to cut the geo.rsp.city that's basically the column that has all of the uh, instances of chicago and that we're going to grep for this one particular piece right here and v i think it means that it's just going to not include it I, let me just run it and make sure yeah so it, it it removes all of the instances out of this whole thing that is just a uh, dash and then it only shows up the unique responses that came out of that which would be chicago itself and so to be able to do this uh, and to actually get the host id as well all we need to find is the response uh, the id response host or hold on i'll find out hold on one second yeah, id response host. So id dot response underscore h, and then same thing city, and then we're gonna remove all of the dashes and we just want the unique. And so there it is. That is the answer for the IP address that matches with Chicago. And so we're gonna copy this one and go to our answers here and paste that answer in there. And last but not least, we're going to investigate the PCAP file with this script, which is the sum stats uh, countable, count table, excuse me. How many types of status codes are there in the given traffic capture? So, and that's the last piece, and then we're gonna wrap this whole thing up. So let's run that command. And this is what the full command looks like. So Zeke 
dash capital C lowercase r or dash C dash R either way. And then case two dot pcap some stats that count table dot Zeke. And so we got what is it? We got four, one, two, three, four, five. We have five, and specifically we're looking for, I think, which one? How many status co uh, how many status codes uh, types are there? So the types of status codes that we have in here are one, two, three, and four. There's four different types of status codes. So there you go. And that is the answer to that. So uh, we finished the room. It was this last piece was a little bit uh, time consuming because we had to restart the machine and deal with certain things. But all in all, I think it was well. I think it worked out. And uh, hopefully uh, you learned some things out of it. This was part two of the Zeke room. And let's jump into the conclusion and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. And the conclusion is just basically a congratulations. So no, no big announcement or anything like this here. Uh, but it does invite you to go into the next one, which is the Zeke exercises room, which is the very next thing that we're actually going to be doing. Uh, it is part of the SOC level one pathway. And let's see if this is a paid room. I should be a free room let's see no this is also a paid room so as you can kind of see down here the screen recording is cutting off a little bit so maybe i can now it's still cutting off a little bit um but uh it says that only subscribers can run virtual machines in this room so the zeke exercises room is also a paid room and so uh just to make uh make use of it you're more than welcome to get yourself the subscription to Zeke. I highly recommend it. Not Zeke, excuse me, try hack me. I highly do recommend it because I think it's very much worth the money and you will learn a lot from it. And uh, if you want, you're obviously more than welcome to do it yourself. But if you use the link in the description below, you'll get an extra five bucks off of the, the membership, which uh, brings it down to seven whole dollars <laughs> and makes it much more affordable. And if you want, you're just more than also welcome to download Zeke on your own machine and run through the exercises with me as we just go piece by piece together here and you'll kind of learn how to do it. The only difference is that you'll have to come up with your own PCAP files or find some sample PCAP files maybe on on uh, GitHub or something like that. And I think there might even be a GitHub repository for Try Hack Me so that you could try to find different things. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways that you can find sample PCAP files that you can use Zeke for and just kind of run through them. Same thing with Snort and all of the other ones that analyze capture files. I invite you to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified whenever a video does come out down this pathway and in everything else that we actually end up doing so that you just kind of tag along with us throughout all of our exercises and get some really, really good information. And hopefully you'll be able to expand on your skill sets and get yourself fully prepared to either become a security analyst or a penetration tester, so on and so forth, whichever desired path you want to take. As always, your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers. Uh, I do apologize if there were some background noise in this particular recording, um, not in my usual studio setup, and I was kind of moving around as I was getting certain things done, and there was a lot of commotion and stuff going on in the background. So I tried to cut it out as best as I possibly could in the edit. But uh, I really do ask for your patience and your forgiveness and your kindness as uh, we try to make this whole thing happen. So uh, hopefully the information still was useful. Hopefully you learned a lot from it. And uh, yeah, so if no one else loves you, Hank loves you. Peace, love, and chicken grease. And I will see you in the next video.